good morning everyone in this session we are going to discuss with the impact of industrial revolution and we are continuing the same unit a change in time yesterday we were discussing of the impact of industrial revolution already you have seen the family joint families separated into nuclear families that is the impact of industrial revolution and also what is that women also began to participate in works just like a working and next one we can say just like a new economic system called capitalism came up and also in the, what is the what is the capitalism we can say that in this system already you have seen in this system the means of production were in private hands that already you have seen and so you have already studied what is capitalist already you have seen just like every uh, factory owners who owned wealth or capital came to be known as capitalist already you have studied and after that you have seen child labor and also those who are just like uh, not working okay those who are escaping from the place they will be they were severely punished if they try to escape already up to there we have finished okay and also come to the next one karl marx okay what he is saying okay karl marx and frederick engels two german thinkers these were two two german thinkers realized they understood what is that realized that industrialization would lead to the formation of two categories which are the two categories of people in the society we can say those who are rich and own property and those who worked for the property owners and the poor just underline it means the two categories are rich and poor okay those who have their own property they are known as rich and also those who are working under the rich they are known as who are okay so those who worked for the property owners and are who are in just under line okay therefore they thought of a way in which property would be owned by all and the benefit of buying and selling your goods would reach every individual and also they want to reach these goods to every individual irrespective of their social status because they are not considering the social status this idea became known as socialism so what do you mean by socialism or marxism we can say that the benefit of buying and selling of goods could reach every individual irrespective of their social status this idea became known as socialism or marxism in other ways we can say that what is that the means of production or distribution and exchange should be owned exchange should be owned or or not owned okay owned or regulated by the community as a whole that is also known as socialism once again i am saying the means of production distribution and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole that is also known as socialism you just understand the this you can understand the benefit of buying and selling of goods to reach every individual irrespective of their social status this idea became known as socialism or marxism okay come to the next one the need for new sources of raw materials which are the raw, raw materials which is steel oil and also all the minerals like this okay so the need for new source of raw materials new markets for finished products and area for investment of capital research in colonialism okay colonialism is a practice so what is colonialism colonialism is a practice by which a powerful nation nation maintains or extends its control over another country for the purpose of exploiting exploiting its resources so what is colonialism we can say colonialism is a practice by which a powerful nation maintains or extends it extends what its control over to another country for the purpose of exploiting its resources resource means what is in the just like in the land they are just exploiting the resources that's all we just have like colonialism okay and also it's time to think like the one follow me sir what time to think what is that the constitution of india describes india as a socialist democracy can you guess what is the answer we can say that what does it mean can you can anyone say the answer we can say that it means that socialist democracy means all are treated as equal and also we can say there is no discrimination and also 
just like uh, discrimination in the public sector and this is the again important in importance to public sector because all are equal all are treated as equal that's all that is socialist sovereign secular democratic republic something okay so that's the meaning so again once again in socialist democracy it means that all are treated as equal that's all okay so come to the next point next topic next point okay imbalance so what do you mean by imbalance so come to the next one eventually by 19th century most countries of asia and africa became colonies in the 19th century okay most countries of asia and africa became colonies colonies means what colonies i think it is there and societies or countries which were under the control of powerful country these are colonies of country to be exploited for economic benefits of the superior country and so they were exploited that's the colonies okay they were under control of the other kind of other things okay under control of powerful country that's it. okay okay where we are okay africa became colonies of the industrialized and capitalist nations of europe okay they were under capitalist nations of europe by virtue of their superior technological power because of their superior, superior technological power it led to the political and economic control of a weak country by powerful one this is known as imperialism so what is imperialism we can say that the political and economic control of a weak country the political and economic control of a weak country by powerful one weak to powerful one okay this is known as imperialism underline in other words imperialism involved systematic control of the territory so imperialism means systematic control of the territory political system and economic life of a less powerful country by the more powerful ones so it means that again i'm saying political system and economic life of a less powerful country by more powerful ones that is known as imperialism in other words so you just underline what is imperialism and also uh, i think most of the this also you can underline over here just like that in other words imperialism involves systematic control of the territory political system and economic life of a less powerful country by the more powerful ones this also you can underline okay so come to the next one i think up to there you don't have any doubt i hope so come to the next one the causes of the causes for the rise of imperialism causes for the rise of imperialism let us see the need for access to both resources and market was necessitated by large scale industrial development in europe this made the europeans venture out of europe to find future colonies in asia and africa these colonies also provided them with a ready supply of cheap labor and also what is the meaning of this one their need for access to both the resources and the markets was necessitated what is a necessitated and necessary to do with something okay by large scale industry development in europe this made europeans venture which means it begins how the european to find the future colonies in asia and africa okay they need to just start up their just like your developments just like industrial development in asia and africa these colonies also provide them with the ready supply of cheap labor and also these colonies just like asia and africa and also they have to pro they have to provide them with the ready supply of cheap labor to where in europe okay in the industrial development countries okay okay large scale industrial development in europe okay, that's it and also come to the next one having a large number of colonies became a symbol of power and influence which sent a number of european nations scram scrambling scrambling means just like a quick action okay scrambling to gain as many colonies as possible that is the next process okay having a large number of colonies became a symbol of power you just underline the colonies became a symbol of power and influence which sent a number of european nations scrambling just like they took action they took the quick action to gain many colonies as possible they need to gain more colonies as possible that's it that's the second cause what is the next one third one the european nations considered themselves 
a superior race. And so the European, they consider them as a superior race. They are the kind of race. Superior one. Okay. They justified their imperialist, imperialist ambitions by calling it their moral obligation and so their duty to civilize the uncivilized, civilize the uncivilized nations of the East. And so they are considered them, the Europeans considered them as a superior race. That is a another cause uh, causes for the rise of imperialism. So these are the India causes for the rise of imperialism. Just underline that. This one, impact of imperialism. Many trade companies were formed in Europe to trade between India and other parts of Asia and Africa. We can see that because many companies were formed in Europe to make a trade with India and all other, all other parts of Asia and Africa. These trading companies, which mainly belong to, which mainly, which mainly belong to Portugal, Holland, Britain, then France and Denmark. And as we can see, the, they established their trading centers in different parts of India to make a flexible trade. Okay. And most of these centers were in the coastal areas and were used as warehouse for trading of goods. What do you mean by warehouses? We can say that a large buildings where materials for manufactured goods are stored before sailing and they were called factories. So what is factories? We can say warehouses for trading goods. Underline. They were called factories. Or we can say a large building where raw materials of manufactured goods are stored before sale. That is also a factory. Just underline warehouses for trading of goods. They were called factories. Underline. Others of that. These factories bought different items from India at low prices and sold them in other countries at a very high price. For example, we can say from India, spices, because all the Europeans, they are very much interested in our spices, pepper, and also we can say coffee, then all the spices, okay. And so from India, they will take all the items at a low prices and sold them in other countries at a very high prices. That's it. So this is the first impact of Indianism. So come to the next one. As long as the Mughal rule, the companies limited their activities only to trade, did not interfere in the political affairs of the Indian princes. And so during the Mughal, okay, when they are ruling, when the, during the period of Mughal, all the companies, they were limited to their activities only to the trade. And so they are not at all interfere in the political affairs. Okay. So what happened then? But the decline of the Mughal Empire, the British and the French companies became very powerful. So after the decline of the Mughal Empire, the British and the French became very powerful and draw out all other companies. They draw out, they remove, okay, one issue, all other companies and after that they established, underline, the English East India Company made a bid for the monopoly of trade in India and eventually succeeded. Succeeded. Okay. Monopoly means they are the supreme power. Okay. So the English East India Company made a bid means achieved for the monopoly of trade in India and eventually they succeeded. That is the next impact. Okay. So by the second half of 18th century, it had gained full control of almost the entire Indian subcontinent what the English East India Company they were okay it gained full control of the almost the entire Indian subcontinent that is the English East India Company okay. next point the European imperialist powers exploited the resources of their colonies on a large scale local industries and trade declined due to their oppressive policy. So what do you mean by oppressive policy? We can say that it is a subject to harsh. And also we can say they don't have any sustainable team. They mean the local industries and the trade, they decline only through the activities of European imperialists. And so what they have done, we can say that the European imperialist powers exploited the resources of their colonies on a large scale. That's why we can say the local industries and the trade declined only due to their oppressive policy. So what was their oppressive policy? We can say that the European imperialists always exploited the resources. That is the 
oppressive policy. So they exploited the resources of their colonies on a large scale. Okay. So that's about the uh, next impact of the imperialism. Okay. I hope you have a good idea about this impact of imperialism. Already first you have seen warehouses, then after that you have seen just like a political affairs, just like a, what is that, after the Mughal Empire, decline of the Mughal Empire, uh, they established the uh, English East India Company and also after that even last we have seen just like a oppressive policies of European Union. So, up to there, I think you don't have any doubt. Okay. So, come to the next one. Sources to study the modern period. We are already familiar with the various types of sources. So, which are the sources can you We can say primary sources, secondary sources. Okay. By historians in writing the history of a particular period, the advantages of sources of the modern period are that they are found in abundance, abundance means plenty, and are also well preserved. Well preserved means well protected. Okay. Now that we are aware of the various overlaps, overlaps means extended overlaps. Okay. In the modern world, history and the modern Indian history, let us read about the various sources that are used to study the modern period in India. These sources are of the following two types. Which are the two types of sources? We can say primary sources and secondary sources. And as here it is written, primary sources are theoretical sources. Original documents are there, newspaper, magazine, letters and printed books, film photographs and video tapes, maps and last we can say secondary sources. So these are the two sources, okay, which are the primary and secondary. So I am going to wind up this session. This session will be continued tomorrow. So thank you.